Today, we're going to be talking about TikTok's first predator. That's the word that's going around, and I'm assuming it's the first documented predator that has been discovered on TikTok. There is no stopping me. There is no stopping the storm, the fire that is the bidet. And so basically, it started out like this. I mean, he was just sending weird pictures with his tongue out. Then as things progressed, things got a little out of hand. Basically, he's a file and who has been messaging multiple 14 year old girls and various other ages under the age of 16. And we're gonna take a deeper look into this, see what he has done and where he is now. Like a lot of these weirdos, he started out on Musical.ly and then transferred over to TikTok as Musical.ly was dying back in 2018. He described himself as a 26 year old jujitsu athlete, gamer, and content creator. But he would say that he just started all this because, well, he was bored at first and saw TikTok on Facebook and decided to check it out. And he found an interest for it and decided, you know, maybe I got something here. I, I could entertain people. I just had this little drive. I just want to help people and make them laugh, give them a laugh, make them make their day a little bit better. Back in uh, 2018, I started um, TikTok uh, musically at the time. I started it to... At first I was bored. I saw it on Facebook. I was like, oh, that looks really cool. Let me give it a shot. Then as I got into it and started enjoying it, I wanted to found find an outlet to entertain people. And so that's what I did. I started entertaining people at the, you know, me being the butt of the joke, you know, making cringy videos and me just not really caring what people think just to maybe get a smile or a laugh or two out of the people. And I did so, uh, successfully very well um you know not to toot my own horn but i did i did really good then as things progressed things got a little out of hand and don't let the way he's portraying himself to you here fool you because he acts innocent but in reality he's doing some really bad things however he has this formed in his head he sees himself as not doing anything bad at all he makes himself sound like he was just on the internet and things just got out of hand on accident i don't know how this happened and these entertaining videos that he spoke of was basically just him dancing <laughs> It wasn't until he went through his bad boy phase that he became viral. And I won't be able to play the song that's played in this clip, but the song is by Falling in Reverse, Good Girls, Bad Guys. And the lyrics go like this. So why do good girls like bad guys? I had this question for a real long time. I've been a bad boy and it's plain to see. So the way I take this is that he was going from a entertainment stance to pivoting into something trying to be a little bit more thirst trappy because, you know, he was becoming famous, TikTok famous. And as most of these weirdos do, when they start to gain a little bit of fame, they start to be exposed for what they truly are. Well, girls really look for in a guy. You don't have to be funny. Hell, you don't even have to be really that good looking. What, the, what do they really want? is they want a Batman in the streets and a Joker in the sheets. No rules, no punishments, and no more secrets. And no secrets was right. All of this amazing content catapulted him to 25,000 followers. In fact, his content was so amazing that he started to get noticed for how amazingly creepy he was. He would start to gain the attention from major YouTube such as Slazo, Slazo, Slazo. On oh, just a little side note, I'm um, this guy. He's the handcuffed guy from that, that first video I did. And I realized that he seemed a little creepy from all the duets he was doing with young girls, but I actually cut out that part of that video because I didn't want to insinuate anything. This dude, by the look of it, does a worrying number of videos with young girls. But a bunch of you guys commented, and then Bionic Pig made a video with some more details about how this guy uh, has been sending some unsavory messages to young girls. So, you know, 
That's always good to see. TikTok's attracting the best people. And this is when we begin to discover the red flags that he has been putting out there for everyone to see this whole time. While he thinks he's being subtle about it and hiding the fact that he is interested in these minors, this would be only a delusion that he would be feeding himself and people looking outside in could clearly see that there was something going on here. And that's the biggest thing I've seen from this guy is that he thinks he's smooth and he believes his own lies. He really thinks that he's not doing anything wrong or he believes that he's smarter than you and he can hide the fact that he's doing something wrong allegedly his duets would look a little something like this oh my god you look so good in that color i wish i could pull that off no one is stopping you state the reason you were committing suicide. nothing to live for I got nothing and no one. Hi. And the videos get worse, but for the sake of YouTube monetization and your eyes, I'm not going to be playing those videos. Plus, most of them have been taken off the internet. Joy. Look at Joy. Joy. Hello, Joy. Look at that face. Look at her. <laughs> oh, she's so happy. You're just so happy, aren't you? I'll give you pets all day. Okay, Joy, get down. I gotta make this video. I gotta make this video, Joy. He would allegedly choose younger girls to do duets with, and the content would often be suggestive and with minors. When he was called out on what he was doing, he became defensive and he had parental support. What's up, guys? So, just the day coming at you with another public service announcement. So, for all those that have been following me and giving me love, and giving me sweet comments and duets and everything and reactions. Thank you so much. Sorry, my glasses broke, so I'm still kind of like getting them. Maybe I'll get some new ones or find my spares, but uh, I appreciate you more than anything you'll ever know. To my haters, all you're doing is fueling the fire. When you comment, like my stuff, follow me, and react to my videos trying to down me, you're just making it worse for you. So do yourself a favor, block me. If you don't like my stuff, if you don't like what I do, block me. Because I will continue to do duets with my fans that love me. And I will continue to do videos from my house where I live with my parents who love and support me and I support them because they need me. His defense wouldn't hold up because people would come forward, minors would come forward and expose him, revealing messages with allegedly 12 to 15 year olds and leaked inappropriate content. A TikToker by the name Bai Hoji would go on to release a series of videos talking about the situation. For everyone that's confused, I don't know how you missed all of this, but I'll explain it anyways. Buddy, Boudet, whatever, talks to um, girls from the ages of like 12 to 15. He messages them on Instagram with very lewd videos and lewd messages and pictures, etc. Basically, lewd means sexually suggestive. Basically, he's a pedophile and who has been messaging multiple 14 year old girls and various other ages under the age of 16 with really inappropriate videos, messages, etc. Just a whole lot of shit. A group of people, including myself, uh, called him out on it. And now, law enforcement is taking over. I, oh my god, I hate that I have to say this, but I know that I probably will be beneficial in the future, like later today or something. These sources weren't all just recently that all these girls are coming up to me and telling me their stories with Buddy. Some girls are telling me that he's been doing this for months, like talking to them and it's been old messages. One girl told me that she was, oh, what did she say? She was 14 at the time, but she told him he was, but she told him she was 15, but now she's actually 15, like long time. Like he's been doing this for a while and just no one said anything until Adam and I started to look into it. So, like, come on. In the videos of Buddy trying to defend himself, he can't even 
utter the word file because he knows he's a fucking file and the saying the word out loud makes him uncomfortable because he knows it's true and these messages would be exposed and shout out to youtuber jay aubrey where i actually got a lot of these receipts from and as well as youtuber sunny v2 the first receipt reads don't be senior year is the best year insinuating he was talking to somebody in high school the next one he says do you think i'm attractive how old are you they say 14 i mean may i be honest yeah of course if it was me i try to make the relationship with you last for years i feel like i look stupid you're okay don't worry about it. I kind of sort of have a crush on you and shouldn't insinuating that he was very aware that this was a bad thing to be doing and then there's the accusation that he was sending inappropriate pictures to minors he is literally a sick freak i'm 15 but when he sent me the blank pic and was talking to me all gross and i was 14 and he knew i was 14 i would send you the inappropriate pic so you have more evidence but i don't want to make you feel uncomfortable they respond with nasty but yes send it to support the case evidence and then snapchats would be revealed i forgot how old are you oh well okay then so maybe next week we can meet just meet you and see you honestly maybe meet at nashville or something i just feel ugly and unwanted no girl finds me cute or anything am i that ugly i feel like it can you please delete that screenshot and then he can even be seen in a text message saying you're a hottie and i'm ugly and sent them 25 dollars. and then some videos would be leaked to which buddy would say that oh he got hacked as seen in this clip from sunny v2's video you're the cute one here not me so not fair like i can't even make you blush so it seems like Make me crush on you even more. However, apparently this whole thing was nothing more than a big misunderstanding, as the buddy would take to his TikTok to state that he'd been hacked, and it was rather bit Hoji, the girl who originally exposed him, who'd been trying to frame him by sending these messages. Which is absolutely absurd. You're talking to minors here. How are you going to try to flip the script? It don't work like that, buddy. And he can claim he never sent those to kids and that he was hacked, but there is clear alleged evidence that he did do this. And Bit, or by is her name on TikTok now made a response to this. Oh my God, another thing. If I was hacking into his Instagram and was sending DMs on his old phone, don't you think he would get those uh, notifications on his Instagram, on his phone that he uses now? Wouldn't he get those notifications and then stop that if he saw that there was a conversation going on in his Instagram DMs that he was not having and that someone was having it through his account? Do you think he would uh, stop that there's just no logic behind any of his reasonings if you actually think about it. I, I'm not trying to be biased here. If you think about the evidence that I have from multiple sources, and specifically this one girl that gave me her whole conversation, it's like, it's all f***ing there. Like, all of my evidence is right f***ing here. For you, it's consumable, it's right here. So convenient, just bite-sized. Come on. If I were to hack into Buddy's iCloud or Instagram or whatever he's saying now, how would I find videos that would match up perfectly exactly what he was saying in the conversation beforehand and what this girl was replying to him? How could I have found videos that match up perfectly? And that claim that he's saying that he's like, there are videos of him when he was a lot younger, like it's just him with his glasses off and his faces like this so you can't see his double chin and his neck beard. I'm flattered that he thinks I'm smart enough to hack into someone's iCloud and I'm honored to ruin someone's f***ing career. Career. He works at home. I would not make something up to this extent just to make someone look bad. Buddy would then make a brief disappearance on the internet, blocking all comments that were against his narrative and eventually privating his account altogether. He would then come back with this dramatic comeback video. And look who's back. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the bidet is back. For those that missed me, I'm sorry. For those that were being haters while I was gone, it's okay. You do you, boo. I just decided to take a little mini vacation from TikTok just to kind of cool myself off from all the fire that's been going around. So I'm back. There is no stopping me. There is no stopping the storm, the fire that is the bidet. For those that like me or follow me just to spread hate, to try to get me off this app, 
Do you realize you're wasting your time? Best thing for you to do is just to block and not follow. Because the less followers I get, the less more I want to be on. The more followers I get, the more I love to be on here. Even if it's just to piss you off. But this mirage would soon be devoured by the mountain of evidence that would soon come forward. Alleged evidence. He would allegedly continue targeting minors, sending them pictures, saying things like cute. I was going to say, don't have to cover up for me. You're cute. Bro, I think she's covering up because you're creepy as hell. And she's a minor. I'd love to get to know you more. I wish I was there. Ha ha. I'd want you. You're beautiful. I kind of like you. You'd be a good girl. 16, right? And you can see in that last Snapchat, he was clarifying that they were 16, meaning he was hoping they were 16. But when asked in a Q&A, they would ask, when dating someone, what age range do you typically choose? He would say 18 to 36. Probably seeing this as an opportunity to clear the air Someone would ask, how do you feel about all the allegations towards you? He would say, it's all bull. Are the allegations true? Nope. But he would then take to Snapchat to further respond to some of these comments being made about him to defend himself, saying, those girls that I did duets with, yes, I did duets. They asked for those duets, first off. It was not meant to be sexual or anything. They weren't supposed to come off that way. The FBI has already investigated me. They've came to my house back in 20. 2018 when all this when all that happened they were just asking me what like stuff about tiktok and what it was and that's it now clearly people were getting fed up with this and something needed to be done so the community started to take a little bit more action a youtuber by the name jadica would pose as a 16 year old and she would upload this video interview with a p word buddy haynes i found his snapchat and i started posing as a 16 year old to try and catch him in the act of the that he's been accused of, which I learned is actually not an accusation. It's complete truth. Um, yeah, so he told me that it was okay for us to flirt, but we could not date because of distance and he could get in trouble for my age. So he knows what he's doing is wrong, but he's okay with flirting with me and saying some pretty weird shit. So, and so basically it started out like, this i mean he was just sending weird pictures with his tongue out and um just like videos of him flipping his tongue in suggestive ways um and i was like well do you want to start flirting then or what is this and he was like i am flirting so i guess this is actually his idea of flirting which is interesting i suppose and here is where i was like well you know i'm not really all that experienced in flirting and he said that I can practice on him, and then that's when he said really about me saying, oh, I'm not that experienced in flirting, you know. I'm like a 16-year-old girl, so. And then here I told him that I was bored, and he said he could make it better. And then I asked him what he meant by that, and he said, oh, well, I'd probably make out with you, haha, -ha, or whatever. I can't remember exactly, but yeah, he said that at some point. Um, and then he also said he would cuddle me, which I am suppose is him trying to be sweet, but it's really just fucking disgusting. And I don't remember why, but at some point he said this, and I was like, um, okay, well, what do you mean by that? And he said, don't need you falling for me. So I guess that means he couldn't tell me because I would fall for him, and this was my actual response to that. <laughs> And so then he just said, let's just say I know what I'm doing. Whatever that means, probably something creepy. This would create more curiosity throughout the community, galvanizing people to want to confront him and find out the truth. A YouTuber named Activist Plug would make a video where he posed as a 17 year old and arranged a meeting with Buddy and confronted him. Not mean somebody? No. Yeah. No, I don't mean anybody, just hanging out. Just hanging out? Just hanging out, man. Damn. Just um, enjoying the pond. Just Enjoying being back. Sounds up, doesn't it? Yep. Different. It's weird coming back. So you don't know anyone by the name of Cat? No. I don't know anybody named Cat. You weren't meeting anyone here by six? No. You sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. 
<laughs> so he just straight up denies everything like they all do when they get confronted in these type of situations. He would go on to deny knowing anybody named Cat, to which activists would give him a chance to clear his name. I'm trying to give you an open opportunity to clear your name of anything. You cool with doing that? Honestly, if I'm not going to do it for information overload, no offense to you, why do you think I would do that for you? No offense to you. I mean, it gives you an open opportunity to get rid of everything, really. Honestly, I I tried doing that, and all it, all it did was cause more commotion than what it's worth. Yeah. So, honestly, I'm not interested, but I do appreciate the opportunity. You got, like, proof, like, going against anything anyone said? No, I honestly don't. But the only thing that I can, I can't answer some of your questions, but that's the only thing that I can answer is one, I did not go to jail. So he feels very secure in saying that he didn't do anything wrong because, well, he didn't go to jail. So therefore, it's impossible that he did anything wrong. When you had said that that one video that was going around that, you know which video I'm talking about. Yeah. You said it was from like two years ago, right? No, that was, um, the dick picture was from two years ago. The alleged dick picture. That's a picture from two years ago. Okay, so... Could you possibly prove that in any way? No. I mean, that was from two years ago. It was to a girl that I met at the bar. Um, we started talking, and I mean, I don't know how it got how it got around, but it did. So, and the only way that could have gotten around is if she sent it. Exactly. Yeah. So, have you by chance had a conversation with the person on that? No. I would I, check them for that. I, That's I very would. dirty. I know. It is very dirty, and uh, I'm still waiting back to hear from... Uh, the police department to see if it was anybody local. Yeah. And I've asked uh, the FBI when they came up and... Well, why would he need to contact the police to see if it was anybody local when it was the chick from the bar, which he just said it was, but he hasn't contacted them. So he should probably contact her, but he won't because, well, that's clearly a lie. This guy's just running in circles here. So another thing I got a question about is what would possess you to like refer to a girl that's like 17 or 16 as hun or babe or boo, anything like that. I was just trying to be friendly. Honestly, I'm just a friendly person and maybe, you know, that is, you know, my fault because I'm just friendly to everyone. I absolutely hate it when they use that excuse. Oh, I'm just a friendly person. And you know, that was just my fault. Oops, I'm just friendly, oopsie. It's absolutely disgusting. So you say you don't know a person by the name of Cat whatsoever? No. You've never talked to someone named Cat within the no. past three months? No. That lives in Thompson Station? No. I think, I think I'd remember that. And then the last thing I do want to ask about is the thing with the 16 year old girl. So what was the real gist of that? Because there's so people confused about that. That one? Okay, so from my understanding, yes, the girl was 16. Right. But she told me she was from the UK. Okay. Now, whether or not this is, you know, something that really irritates people or not, age of consent in UK is 16. Everywhere. Right. So even if I was saying those things towards her, there's nothing illegal about that. Now. Here there is. Yes, here. Here in the United States there is. In not, the UK it is. Not, not in every state. In Illinois, yes, not in, in, in Illinois it's 16. Michigan is 17. But and of course he used that excuse because why wouldn't he? He sits there and says that he's not a p word and then turns around and says, well in UK it's it's okay to do it over there and then some states it's also okay. Still, and like legal doesn't necessarily mean right. Slavery was legal, a bunch well, of things were legal, okay. prostitution now, yeah, okay. was so, legal. But so I have talked to that girl since then. Right. Me and her are still friends to this day. She apologized to me. And I apologize to her. So, why was that even sent in to those people to inform overload in the first place? I don't know. Honestly, I'm still trying to figure out why any of that stuff stuff was sent to inform overload. Yeah. After all of this went down, Buddy would try to migrate his career to Twitch, where he would stream Fortnite, to which he would not be successful. He also attempted a music career, where he went by the name Freak Alpha on SoundCloud. Until this day, still gets comments on it with this person saying, bro needs a feature on the next Diddy song. He would go on to release one of his hit singles, Alpha. 
Wake up in the morning, sipping on my haters' tears. Feasting on the doubts and banging the fears. Gotta get ready to get the spread. As you talk shit, your girl's giving me head. You think you can stand up, boy? Sit down and shut up. You nothing but a certified troll, so back the f up. They call me Troll Killer, undisputed destroyer. Best stand behind your screen, keyboard warrior. I shine so bright, has to live off my energy. When I get done with you, you won't even be a memory. I'm alpha, best hands down, and better than the rest. Give me paper, pen, and I'll pass any test. I'm the greatest thing since bottled water. You're gonna need to use it because it's about to get hotter. And it goes on for like another four minutes or so. But that line right there, I'm the greatest thing since a bottle, bottle of water, I mean... That's pretty fire. And he also tried to make a return on a YouTube channel called Papa Freak, but to no avail. And that's where he posted this video clearing the air. What is up guys and gals, the Freak Show fam. Have no fear, the man, the myth, the legend, Papa Freak is here. Yes, you are reading the title correct. Yes, you're reading the description right. We are going to do a very special episode of the Campfire Chat. We are going to clear the air about the allegations that are surrounding me. My intent was not to be cringy or flirting or anything like that with anyone in any of the videos. So if that came off that way, that's on me. I should have made sure that didn't happen. So with that, I apologize. And if you are one of those people, I am sorry. He says that that wasn't his intent, but if you go back and watch some of those videos, it is clearly his intent. That's the whole theme behind the video is him being sexual. I dealt with a lot of depression and anxiety, schizophrenia, alcohol abuse, and I, there's a lot of those videos that I was not necessarily in my correct state of mind. And, you know, that's, that's on me. You know, I'm not trying to, like, diffuse the situation that, oh, it's okay. No, it's not okay. I should have been more present in those times. Um, there are conversations between me and some underage people. My intent is never to groom, pray, or sexualize anyone. Whether you are of age or not of age. I am just a friendly person. And maybe that comes off to some people the wrong way. As far as the picture of my junk. You know, I did say, you know, I was having problems with alcohol and anxiety and depression with schizophrenia. I wasn't taking my medicine. I was using alcohol to self-medicate myself. And, you know, as a lot of people do, we take pictures. And we do send, we do send them to people. So this guy just blamed his mental illness, blamed his substance abuse, and then turns around and also says that we just take pictures of our junk, our privates, and just send them to people. It's actually crazy what comes out of some people's mouths. As of now, Buddy hasn't been seen around on the internet ever since he posted that, but it's important to keep spreading awareness on this and keep an eye out for his reemergence because it is inevitable. Maybe he's just waiting for all of this to just blow over, or maybe he's on an alt account. Who knows? But now you're informed and aware of his presence, so keep an eye out. Shout out to two of our newest Patreons, Sherry and Stir. Thank you for becoming a Patreon, and shout out to our other Patreons, Leah, Kathy, Mandy, Lexi, Kat, Siri, Jess, Darian, Dawn, Cyber Katie, and Repzilla. And one final huge thank you to our top tier Patreon Lucy Dixon. Thank you so much for all the support and I'll see everybody in the next video.